Let's solve this fluid mechanics problem. We are dealing with a certain viscous incompressible flow field with zero body forces and the velocity components are given as u equals ay minus b times in parentheses cy minus y squared. The v component zero, w component is zero. Uh, a, b and c, they are just some constants. And they want us to use the Navier-Stokes equation to determine an expression for the pressure gradient in the x direction. And uh, the second question, they want us to determine for what combination of A, B, and C will the shear stress be equal to zero when y is equal to zero and the velocity is equal to zero. All right, let's get started. So the Navier-Stokes equation, that like they said, that's what we're going to have to write up. And they are asking for the pressure gradient in the x direction. Therefore, we're going to write up the x component version of the momentum equation, right? Navier-Stokes or conservation of uh, momentum, same thing. They're just two names for the same thing. Okay, so this is right here. We can see the Navier-Stokes equation, and let's uh, start canceling some things out. So they told us it's a steady state. That means there's no change with respect to time. So we can come and cross out the very first term, since that's the only one that's dependent on time. Right here we can see there's a t, nowhere else there's a time variable. That's the one we can cancel it out. Okay. What else we know? We know that V and W are zero. So that will help us out. We come here, cross out V. We come here, cross out W. Both of those are gone. Now, they also told us no body forces. Well, this Fx, that's the one we're talking about, that goes to zero. Uh, U, we cannot cross out over here because it's given it has some kind of value right it has it's a function but let's take a look at this guy next to it the change of u with respect to x and that is if mathematically we're looking at it what is that a derivative of this function u with respect to x so let's do that we're gonna take this function of u and take a derivative of it with respect to x Plug it in, and there you go. We have it that it's equal to zero. So therefore, we can come up here and cross it out. Now, if we uh, look over here, we need a second derivative of it as well with respect to x, right? So our result here, and if we take another derivative of a zero, well, that's just going to give us another zero, which is very good because that means we can come up here and cross this guy out as well. Now let's take a look at the very last term. We're going to do the same thing. They want us to take a derivative with respect to z of the function u. But they want the second derivative, right? So let's do that. Take the first derivative of u with respect to z. That will give us a, a 0 because there's no z terms in this function, right? So it's zero. They want the second derivative, so do it. That's just going to give us another zero. Very good. We can come back to the Navier-Stokes and cross this guy out as well. Okay, let's write up everything we have left. And here it is, left-hand side. There's nothing left. We crossed everything out, so it's a zero. And on the right-hand side, we have the pressure term. Bring it down. And we have the kinematic viscosity times this second derivative right here. Now, there's nothing we can do here, but let's take a look at this term, the second derivative of u with respect to y. Well, let's just do exactly that. We're going to take the u function and take two derivatives of it with respect to y. Here it is, the first derivative. We can see this is what we get, a minus bc plus 2by. And let's take a second derivative, and that's just going to give us a result of only 2b. Very good. So let's come back to our equation and plug it in. There it is. 
Now let's uh, clean up our constant and I'm going to get rid of this uh, density down here and change the kinematic viscosity to dynamic viscosity with this formula right here. This is going to help us. So that's why I'm multiplying this whole equation. And there it is. We turn into uh, this into this. And here's our pressure term. That's exactly what we're going to look at, right? So take our constant to the other side. And there you go. We have the final answer for the first question. This is the pressure term in the x direction. It's only 2 uh, dynamic viscosity times B. Good. Let's take a look. In this question, they want us to determine the combination of A, B, and C for which the shear stress will be zero at the location of Y equals zero and velocity equals zero. To start, I'll write up the formula for shear stress and right off the bat, we can see that V equals zero. Therefore, this guy falls out, leaving us only with this term right here. Dynamic viscosity time, the first derivative of U with respect to Y. Okay, let's do exactly what this operation calls for right here, that, which is take a derivative of our U function with respect to Y. Here it is. I plugged U in, take a derivative of it. And we arrive to a function that describes our shear stress in this flow. Here it is. But they want us to make sure that this shear stress is zero and not wherever, only at the y equals zero. So let's plug these two into this function. Here it is. Now that's going to give us zero equals mu times a minus b c plus 2b times 0. So this term is gone. Let me cross it out. There you go. This term is gone. That leaves us with only these two. And dynamic viscosity is not 0 for sure. They told us that this is a viscous flow. So that means that whatever we have in the parentheses needs to be 0. Therefore, 0 equals a minus b c. Or if you want to rewrite it, A equals BC. Here you go. This is the final answer for our second question. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe and like the video and have a great day.